Hi, Bachelor Party friends. We're about to get into part two with Rachel Platten. But first, let me tell you about a couple of other things going on at The Ringer. First of all, Billions is back in season. It's season three, and my colleagues are over the moon happy, including Bill Simmons and Mallory Rubin. And therefore, you can catch them on the recapables every Sunday night going over what they just saw. It's a great podcast. Mallory and Bill are a great duo, and I highly recommend you check it out and subscribe to the recapables. And if you're looking for something to read, check out Lindsay Zolad's On the Ringer. She wrote about Logic, the rapper, who I find incredibly confounding, and I'm happy that Lindsay was able to explain him a little bit to me. So check those both out, Recapables podcast and Lindsay Zolads on logic on the ringer.com. Now let's get into it. Hello, welcome to Bachelor Party. I'm Juliette Littman. Today we are not talking about reality TV. Instead, this is part two of my conversation with Rachel Platten, the first part of which ran a couple of days ago. I've been trying to get Rachel on this podcast for almost two years. It finally happened and I couldn't let her go without talking about music because I love pop music and she is in the pop music world. So we spent quite a long time on various digressions that taken all together are something of a conversation. We talked about the singer-songwriter world of ballet. We talked a little bit about Taylor Swift. We talked about how the sausage is made. We talked about great songwriters in the pop world. Uh, Thanks again to Rachel for coming and I hope you guys like this. How many times in your life do you think you have sung the song Fight Song? <laughs> like, it's got to be over a thousand. Oh, yeah. Over 2,000? Yeah. Probably well, probably right around 2,000. Did you tour <laughs> for that first album? Or not I first did. album, but it was like... Yeah. Um, yeah, I toured it. And besides the actual, like, setup tour of my mm-hmm. headlining tour, which is like when I'm the headliner and sure. you go and see me, um, I was doing a ton of radio gigs and I was traveling in it all around the world and and I sang it probably every single day except oh for like God. 30 days that year. Do you get sick of that song? No. You don't? No. That's beautiful. I honestly don't. I'm obsessed with the Backstreet Boys and I went to their Las Vegas residency. How was it? One of the best nights of my life. I'm not joking. My, friend, my sound guy left me to do the sound for the Backstreet Boys. It's, How well, was the sound? He, incredible. Oh, God, I it, know. His bass is great, right? It's the, it's, I really want to go again, but I don't I don't know if like it'll be possible because it's like hard to get tickets. But I'm your girl. Okay, great. I can get you tickets. <laughs> I loved it so much. And, I, and one of the reasons it was great is they didn't do anything new. They just played the classics. And it was yeah. like classic choreography. Yeah. And I was like, how many times in their lives yeah. have they sung I Want It That Way? Like, how do they not despise that song? Well, here's the thing. I think that I can't speak for other musicians, but I but Fight Song is, like, I think it, right now, I'm, by the way, I'm in this process of, like, transition because I'm in between managers and I'm taking all these manager meetings. And cool. it's, like, really interesting because part of it sucks and it's hard because I have to hear from all these people what I did right, what I did wrong. And it's right. kind of like you're going to a work review over and over and over with new people. I mean, what did you do wrong? I feel like you're, like, riding, <sighs> riding a wave right now. Well, no, I thank you. I just mean in terms of, like, I could have toured more internationally. Oh. Like, I should have built more of a fan base in South America. I could have, like, toured in Australia. I there was a Spanish-language version of um, Fight Song. Or no, oh, of um, Samba Yu. Samba Samba Yu. Yeah. Yeah. Cuando ya no puedes más. Yeah. Do you speak Spanish? No. Oh, it But enough great. on a red carpet that cool. people around me will be like, wow, she speaks Spanish. Cool. Yeah, that sounded great. But okay, so I can't speak for other musicians and their mm-hmm. songs, but Fight Song, I wrote at such a personal time in my life that, and this is the part where I'm, bringing in these other managers because I don't know that all of them totally believe it. Uh-huh. You know, like I can see in the meeting, some of them trying to suss out like, who is the girl behind that song? Sure. Who are, who could really sing those words and throw their fist in the air and like, and be like that person in real life. But it is truly who I am. It came from this desperate um, need to like believe in myself sure. when, when I, when it was so hard to, because I'd been trying for 13 years to make music happen. I was 30, 31 at the time. I was broke. Everyone was kind of like over it mm-hmm. around me. You know, they're like, you should give up. <laughs> oh like, we're God. having babies. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, I have a van. <laughs> um, so it was really hard. And, and I wrote the song. It took two years and I would write it in the middle of the night and I had to learn how to produce for it. Oh, cool. Yeah, I learned from this guy in Guitar Center. I found like this. Oh my god, the most eager looking, dorky looking in guy. LA. In, in the, I was living in New York at oh, the time. Oh, cool. And I was like, you want to come teach me Logic? Which Guitar Center? Uh, 14th Street. Oh, cool. And 6th. I know yeah. that one. Kurt, yeah. by the way, if you're listening, thank, awesome. thank you. I guarantee you're not. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I really mean those words and sure. it's an affirmation. And it's like, I know it can sound a little, you know, cheesy, but it's like 
really is what I believe. And every time I sing them, I remember that I believe that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm That's not, awesome. And I'm not in that state of mind all the time. Like, I'm normal and I get depressed and I'm insecure and I sure. doubt myself all the time. So to sing that and, and feel that confidence and hear it echoed back to me from, even if it's only like 10 people, if it's a, I guess I don't play for 10 people anymore, but if it, if it was only a couple people in a room, I don't know. It's just, it's like this, some kind of a magic sure. that reminds me to believe in myself. Again. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I mean, like if you have that like pure love for your own work, yeah. like that's amazing. I don't think you need a new manager if you feel that way. Oh God, no, no, no. I, it's it's not that I need a new manager for other reasons. But okay. yeah, all right, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, was it hard to have a song that's so personal for you lent to the Hillary Clinton campaign? Then, like, how did that come about? It was and, a really hard decision. Yeah, were yeah. you hesitant to allow them to do it? I was. Yeah, they asked. Um, who asks? Like, who reaches out to you? <gasps> I, I was just talking to my old drummer about this because I was trying to remember. He told me that we were at a private event for like some human rights organization in New York and mm-hmm. like a couple members of her team aggressively came into our green room and they were like beautiful and well-dressed and like powerful woman. And they like nice. walked in and they're like, we need some of Rachel's time right now. Oh my God. It was a whole thing. Did you know they were coming or was it like an ambush? He kind of sort of ambushed. Oh my God. Yeah, he was kind of like, where right they came. Yeah, he was kind of like Rachel, Hillary Clinton's people right outside. I was like, oh, do I have a second? He was like, no. Go outside. And they kind of like full court press, like, you know, we're just, this is why you need to do this. Do you know what her campaign is about? Any questions you have, Mm -hmm. you have direct line to her. Anything you need, like, we'll answer anything. And it was intimidating because at the time the song was still on the radio and still. Yeah. I think actually Stand By You was was taking over at that time. But Stand By You came out in the fall of 15, I think. So I think Fight Song had already been out for like a few months, right? Fight Song was kind of had peaked and. Yeah was off the radio or like dying down. But so I was scared. I was like, I was just really scared that it would polarize people. And it's something that unites people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not all music does that. Sometimes it does it. Yeah. This was this freak song that happened to bring people together and remind people that we all face something that, you know, behind these like perfect profiles on social media sure. that we all have this like common thing of feeling insecure and like I don't know I just I knew that there was that power in it and I was really scared to make people upset about that choice and and I did get that I got that backlash when I did decide ultimately who people were mad that they, they chose the song because it was really like, upset like because it was like too personal and like it was like selling out or no they were more like how dare you I got tons of these messages this is why I didn't really? go on Twitter how dare you let my song be used for that like, like woman. a political oh, got it. how would you how could you let like this is the song that my my son and I healed to oh, God. you know this was my son's cancer song or this was my daughter's soccer song how could you take this from me interesting it was so interesting would you do would you make the choice again or would you not do it no I would absolutely make the choice again that's really fascinating that people like get I mean first of all it speaks to the fact that your music's like connecting on a personal level but that's also interesting they take it so personally that you like make that choice yeah, I don't know. It really, it hurt, it hurt me because I felt such a responsibility for like, I just want everyone to like me. You know, sure. it's my it's my biggest fault. Like, I'm like, <laughs> do you want to know why? You can't yeah. go on reality TV because people would pick up on that. No and, shit. And they'd be so mean to you. Oh, no shit. Yeah. I would be like the dorky girl that's like, let's be friends. And you would yeah. get bullied. And I know. So you can't go on. It's true. Yeah. I'm working on it now, you know, like <laughs> in therapy. Nice. I'm like, it's a big thing that I'm like, well, I can... I'm a woman. I don't need to get everyone's approval around me. I can make decisions and and stand on my own. And, yeah. like, and it's an, an empowering thing to learn. But last summer, I was still, it was two summers ago, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I was still in a place of like deep uncertainty and like, oh God, this is, it's the whole thing that music was working for me after so many years yeah, of it not working. It. Yeah, I was scared. I didn't want it to be taken away. It was, it was like, I kept pinching myself. Like, is this real? Yeah. Labels, every label said no to me. And then finally, it was working. How did that come about with Columbia? Um, so Fight Song was on um, Pretty Little Liars. Yeah. And it had been out for like a year mm-hmm. before that. And no one really gave it. <laughs> and then it was, I knew, like, I knew. I was like, there's something in this. You know, if it just gets aired to a lot of girls, yeah. they'll understand it. Okay. Well, then we, we got to get you on Big Little Lies, I think. is the next stop. I freaking love that show. I yeah. feel like that. Yeah. And also, are you working on a new album? So I put out an album in October. Yeah, it's I called, really like it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm working on new music right now and cool. not an album. And I haven't really announced why, like what the new music is. Mm-hmm. So 
I probably can't yet, but okay. I am in the studio again. You don't want to give me the exclusives, <laughs> what you're saying. That's fine. This is the perfect spot for it. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. If you change your mind, let me know. Uh, but your album from the fall is called uh, Waves. Yeah. I'm really into Shivers and Clyde, and I think those actually are both, like, great. Um, I think it's because Spotify keeps suggesting them to you. Yeah, but, but I'm like, cool, I really like these. But I was yeah. listening to the whole record, and I was like, oh, this is great. Thank you. Um, it's, it's, it, I'm like, I love television, and so many of the music, not so much of the music that I love is because of, like, a really great musical cue. Is that true? Yeah. Like wow. I Yeah, like I well, I was just so into the WB when I was growing up. Yeah. And so like the reason I tweeted at you about the I'll stand by you by the pretenders is because that's part of the Dawson's Creek pilot. And it's like a huge, <laughs> huge moment in that episode. Joey and Pay- or sorry, Joey and Dawson just had a fight. They're like, she's like, Dawson, like we're going like it yeah. matters. Like we're, you're a boy, I'm a girl. Like, it's like a you know, like a coming of age <laughs> fight. And she wa- and she asked him, like, when do you she's like, when do you walk the dog? And he's like, What? And she's like, Come on, like when do you walk the dog? Like jerking off. And he won't answer. What? I've never heard anyone call it that. I know. It's, it's just horrible. a weird Dawson's Creek thing. <laughs> she climbs out the window, goes down the ladder, and um the pretender starts coming on, and she's like going walking over to her boat to row down the creek I'll back stand home. By you, though. Yeah. And he yells out the window in the morning to Katie Couric. <laughs> and then it's like uh, then it's like the piano comes in or whatever and it's like a huge moment and those and I also love Grey's Anatomy yeah. and the music's so important yeah. to that and oh so you're right yeah it, it's, yeah it's a huge part of it they yeah. did like a, a whole musical episode where mm-hmm. Callie sings like the biggest musical cues from the show it's like it's just a whole thing but anyway music and TV like so much go together for me mm-hmm. and as someone who loves pop music and more than that loves like really good vocalists mm. I um, like I always pick up on it and I'm like oh interesting choice of music here so it's very wow. not surprising to me that that's kind of the story behind Fight Song. It's, that's a long way of saying it. No, I, that is that is really interesting to me. I mean, I know that as a musician, I was aware that mm-hmm. how powerful those syncs were because it became this change like halfway through me trying to make it that the labels weren't, and that the a and people, the labels weren't actually the most important people to get uh-huh. music in, the, get in their hands on your music. Right. But actually the... Um, I'm forgetting the Like the a name. music supervisor? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Music supervisor for these shows were. Yeah. Did you ever watch the OC? Of course. The OC kind of made like musical supervision into a thing. Yes. Because the musical cues were so great. Right. Like starting with the theme song, California, when they're, you know, we've been on the run, <laughs> like that's a huge one. Keep going. And, <laughs> no. <laughs> and they use Image and Heap so many times. Yeah. And like that. And, and Oh, yeah. I, that hide and seek song yeah. exploded from that episode. Exactly. That's right. And then they had her yeah. saying Hallelujah, the right. Jeff Buckley song, I mean, the Leonard Cohen song. And um, anyone covered that on any TV show, I feel like is going to be massively successful from it. That oh, song yeah. is just epic. totally. But I'm like, wow, it's so. I don't know. It's just interesting to hear as a music fan that that is how you feel like you found music. Oh, definitely. These days too, or more from Spotify now. Um, I would say both. I listen to my daily mixes. Like you know how you get six mixes. Yeah. Like right now, three of mine are <laughs> pop music. One is classical. One is musicals, and one's like pop, mainstream musicals. Oh yeah, you're so cute. <laughs> Big time. What ones do you like? <laughs> um. Last five years, can't go wrong. Um, I love Hamilton. I've seen it four times. Me too. Three. Uh, nice. Oh, God. Yeah, so I, saw the, I got to the original cast twice <gasps> in New York. Stop. I also went to their Tony's after party. Which oh, my was God. Probably one of the best nights I've ever had oh up there with God. the Backstreet Boys. Yeah, it was really fun. Shout out to my friend Caitlin. Fine. You went with the Backstreet Boys, did you just say? No, I said up there with the oh, Backstreet okay. Boys. I was like, you and the Backstreet Boys went to Hamilton no, after no. party? No, no, no. Um, <laughs> to the start of a joke. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just love. Love musicals. Wow. Yeah, I love them. I love them all. Really into, into the Woods, of course. West Side Story, mm-hmm. Les Mis. Were you in any when you were growing no, up? No, I have no talent just at all. A fan. Just love them. Also, I, <laughs> I grew up in New York, so Rent is like incredibly important to me. Saw it seven times. Like just ridiculous. But anyway, nineteen ninety four. He's in a Eastern Standard Time. I don't know. I, yeah, like, I know every single word. To totally. That one. On New yeah. Year's Day, I, I was at the beach, and a couple of friends came over, and I was we were like cooking breakfast, and I was just screaming Rent the entire time. <laughs> <But> anyway, <laughs> besides the point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I listen to, I mean, I still discover music through Spotify, but the shows that I care about, music mm. is usually important to them. Yeah. So. Okay, so Pretty Little Liars aired Fight Song. Yes. And um, I was expecting, like, a massive explosion. Like, mm-hmm. I just was like, okay, I know how this works. It's going to get out on one of these shows. And it was a pivotal moment. Allie was walking down the stairs nice. at prom. It was a big deal. <laughs> and nothing this happened. Is, mm, yeah, nothing happened the next day. All. No. Like there was no reaction. No, one, no at I mean, Rachel there was Platten, some. Love your music. Some at Rachel Plattens. I was I was still reading it at nice. that time, <laughs> and uh, there was some. But I thought like that was going to be it, mm-hmm. and I just totally broke down. Like I fell apart. It was like after 13 years of keeping myself strong and like not admitting that how totally scared and messed up I was. Sure, I just fell apart, and I was like, forget it, it's done. And then I made a decision. Like, you know what? 
that was pathetic, Rachel. Stop chasing this success. If if I'm meant to make music, whatever level I'm going to make it on, I get to follow my dream at least, and I'm going to be okay with that. I'm going to I'm going to surrender a little bit. And I feel like when you hear people say that, you don't totally believe. Like I never am like, yeah, right, yeah. really. But I just didn't know what else to do. I had been trying for literally 13 years. And so I made that decision. And the next day, maybe two days later, um, a r- old radio guy I used to work with called me and he was like, Rachel, I played your song for the head of this program, um, this radio station in Baltimore, and he's going to put it on the air this weekend on this marathon for breast cancer. Cool. And I was like, cool. Great. That's amazing. Yeah. And from that, it started shazamming at like number one oh, around wow. Baltimore. And that's when labels... Came. So Shazam was like important Shazam to was your success. Incredibly important. Interesting. Yes. It wasn't the show. It was actually Shazam. Wow, that that's amazing. Station. Did Shazam know that they were important to I your story? I didn't know that they knew, but actually I was uh Googling myself. What? <laughs> what do you I didn't <laughs> say that, did you? Both me and my mom have Google alerts oh, for me. It's God. fine. <laughs> what you do? Yeah, of course. Don't you want to know so people cute. are talking shit about you? I don't have a Google alert for myself, but uh, but Kevin you does. You get too many. Kevin's your husband, right? Yeah. What does he do? I never talk about him this much in a podcast. I just, it's just that I he, met him once. Really nice guy. Yeah. It's just that he set this up, basically. Yes, he did. For people listening, my husband is a huge Juliet fan <laughs> and and Bill fan and the nice. whole the whole thing. And um, found out that Juliet like, and I might do this podcast together. And this was back like a year ago, right? Yeah. And then it kind of just fell apart. Or just, we just let, both, we let it go. Both, both were, we're busy. Yeah. We're You're busy. definitely busier than okay. me. You released an album. I was busy. Yeah. <laughs> I was busy. But Kevin kept asking me. Like, there were way more pressing things. <laughs> and he just kept being like, babe, um, did you ever uh, follow up with Juliet about that podcast? <laughs> That's so, awesome. Thanks, Kevin. We're going to talk more about the music scene in L.A. But first, exciting news coming out of The Ringer. We have merch. The Ringer has a new merch store with a shiny new storefront that you can check out right now. We have hats, hoodies, and even an exclusive Shea Serrano disrespectful dunk t-shirt. Your friends will be jealous when they see you strutting down the street with an official Ringer zip-up hoodie. Previously available only to Ringer staffers, we are now letting you, our loyal listeners, get first dibs on the goods. So go to ringer.com slash shop to pre-order your merch now. These are limited run items and they will not last long. Once they are gone... They're gone. Again, check out theringer.com slash shop to pre-order your official Ringer merch today. You can also find the link to the Ringer web store in the podcast description. I want to talk to you about the singer-songwriter world in L.A. I am a diehard Bruno Mars fan, and I know that, like, he really came up sort of performing around here and, like, being in the songwriting scene. And so, like, is there, like, a secret? One of my favorite facts about also L.A., this is really random, but is that um, Jamie Foxx discovered Ed Sheeran because he was on the Foxhole. What? Yes, Jamie Foxx. What's the Foxhole? It's his like serious radio show or whatever. And Ed Sheeran was on it. And like, it's also like out of a club. And so Ed Sheeran recorded his his demo in Jamie Foxx's home studio. Yeah. And so so ever since I learned that, I was just like, what is this secret world? And then also related to Ed Sheeran, he like tells stories about like hanging out at his house, like passing around a bottle of whiskey and a guitar with like Gavin DeGraw and Taylor Swift and like (laughs) just like and Joan Mayer. I'm just like, cool. Can I come? I'm just a nerd who loves like this, like loves pop singing. And also I love Julia Michaels. Like I love those kinds of artists. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, Like what is that scene like? And do you have parties that I can come to? (laughs) It's okay. Don't Absolutely. Invite me. I'm like, you're so fun. Well, what would you be like at a party? Would you be like a good me? invite? Yeah. If you give, if there's vodka, would you be I'm shy? Pretty fun. No. Okay. I'm a big. I just introduce myself to okay, everyone. Okay. Hell yeah. I'm uh, totally bringing you. Um. Have you ever heard Joel Embiid? <laughs> He's just like a seven foot four basketball player. Yes, of course. I w- have you? No. Nope. Oh, okay. I once saw him at a party and I just walked up to him and tapped him on the shoulder. Yeah. I was like, hi, I'm Juliet. And <laughs> then I tried to get him to take a selfie with me. But anyway, I'm, I'm so you give me two drinks and I'll talk to anyone. Done. Okay. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm much the same way. So cool. everyone is friends. It's a really small scene and everyone is really cool. These people are fascinating. Like who's the coolest? I, I don't know who's the coolest. It's okay. No one's no, listening. Honestly, they won't I, listen. It's fine. Okay. Well, Benny always has a great. Benny Blanco. Benny has a great um, Grammy he, party. He's got a great new billboard up here in LA. Oh, does he? From I haven't Spotify. seen it. Yeah. It's like, have you seen these billboards? It's like geniuses behind the song. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Spotify genius. Yeah, yeah. He has one. Yeah. Um, so... And I've only met him at these parties, mm. so I really can't speak to like if he's. But I've, but I've like he, we have all the same friends, and he's supposed to be awesome. And, um, but he has the best gram, post Grammy party. Good to know. So I'm, I think he might be like. I don't really know his school. <laughs> I don't know. I'm definitely not. <laughs> that so sounds don't great. Don't rely on me. But I mean, 
like, okay, it's just a really nice community. There's no like popular kids and there's no unpopular kids. Even people who are successful versus the not successful people, mm-hmm. everyone's hanging out. That's what I think is really nice. When you're like, okay, I need to write a new song. Yeah. Who do you go to? Like, who's like, okay, I'm going to talk to this person to help me. Well, first of all, let me explain a little bit about the scene to you. Okay. So everyone... There's, it's so small and everyone kind of knows everyone. Mm-hmm. And the publishers are the people that really are in charge of right. setting up the sessions and knowing who's going to work with who. And that's when you know you're big because you get points on your own publishing catalog, right? Good for you. Okay, cool. I learned about that one with the One Direction guys. I'll go through their Very. own deals. Well, yeah, I mean, with... Okay, well, it's confusing because, I mean, I write my own song, so of course I'm going to get points. Right, but like for... For bands that may, maybe don't start in the songwriting space, like when they start to get their own credit. It basically. happens a lot, a lot more than you'd think. Right. Like Miley Cyrus was similar, I remember. Yeah. Kind gosh. of the, the, kid, the kid stars. Yep. The kid stars. Well, I mean, even you're going to, yeah, you're going to be able to negotiate publishing on your behalf if you're the star, because think about it, that song's not going to get out there. Yeah, without, and publishing yeah. is the only thing right now that you're going to make money off of. Right. You're not going to make money off of sales because it's streaming. So, all right, the publishers are kind of in charge of like, who's going to be set up with whom? Mm. And is it, is that whom? Who's going to be set yeah, up with who's, whom? Who's set up with whom? Yeah. Thank God. Whom's right. the object? Yeah. Oh, good for you. Who's the subject? Yeah. So um, keep going with that little. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> anymore? Just an editor over here. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and my publisher, Amanda, happens to be one of the cool kids. Cool. She's very cool. She has tattoos everywhere. Mm-hmm. She's really hot, way hotter than me. And like, she's just like, everyone knows her. So Amanda's cool, you know, like, and she knows exactly who I need to be set up with at the moment. She's the one who pinpointed way before my manager at the time who liked to take to take credit for it. Mm-hmm. She was the one who heard Fight Song and was like, this is a hit. Oh, interesting. This is a hit. And I, cause I had written it four years before it came out. And she was like, that chorus is gonna make you famous. I don't know what why you're stressed. I'd call her like panicking about other things. She's like, who cares? You have Fight Song. What are you talking about? Hang up and call me back when you decide to realize that Fight Song is a hit. That's awesome. So I totally listen to her. And so Amanda's got it down. Amanda's got it down. And she'll set me up with like, right now I have a new set of people, but mm. like my my go-tos have been John Levine, who produced uh-huh. Fight Song. And he is working on some Alessia Cara stuff right oh, now. Cool. And the Struts. And also Jason Evigan. Oh, yeah. Do you know Jason? I do. Wait, heard, how? You I've really heard, know these names? Heard, yeah. I'm just, I like, Dang. I'm a creep. I'm an internet creep. I just like, I'm like, what's this person? I look them up. Wow. Yeah. I'm fascinated by that. Yeah, all right. Just, for a lay person to know all this information. <laughs> this, is, this is like something that I really care about. Like, I'm the type of person who I'm like, oh, the British uh, festival circuit has begun. I need to see the f- first set that Himes going to do from their new album. And I'll just like sit at my computer and SG watch it. SG is one of my close friends oh, cool. in, in the um, industry. She's one of my favorite I'm going to the show friends. at the uh, Santa Barbara Bowl in a couple weeks. Are you? Yeah. They would, they're like the most fun, cool girls. I've never felt as, fo- I never experienced as much FOMO as I do for the um, A Little Bit of Your Love video where they're dancing in the bar mm. in the valley. I went to the summer camp where we did line dances every Saturday night. <laughs> I'm still really close to all the my girlfriends from camp. And I'm like, this is like, I am too, where when I went to summer camp. Yeah. Too. And yeah. like, if I went for yeah. 10 years, we're all, we're also really close. What camp? Walt Whitman in New Hampshire. I went to New Hampshire camp too. Which one? Waikasuda. Oh my God. I've been to Waiko. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so all by the same camp group. Malia Obama went to Waiko. Did you know that? You know what? I didn't until really recently. She Allie did. Baseman, who's in this Aerie campaign yeah. with me, yeah. is also a Waiko girl. She is? Yes. Anyway. All right. I'm going to tell you a little bit more. Okay. So do you want to know do. about like what a songwriting day is like? Yes, I do. Because I've never really talked about this I would before. love to hear about it. And, I, and when Kevin's brought it up, it's something that he's like, something you might want to talk about with Juliet. <laughs> I really do want to hear about it. Actually, that's a fun thing to talk about. Yeah. All right. So a songwriting day starts with, it's very strange. Mm -hmm. You usually don't know each other. You walk into a room and if you're the artist, me, you have to spill (laughs) your fucking deepest secrets. Like this is how I'm feeling. This is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm going through. You guys are my therapist. You have like, you said, everyone knows you have like a half an hour to an hour of just like talk in the beginning. And these conversations are fascinating because these people are amazing and brilliant and have followed their dreams and like are just good people. Like they're all really freaking awesome. You're just a little too positive. Like what's the worst songwriting experience you've had? um, When it's just so like so awkward and the song's not coming and Uh you like feel like you're just like, I want to like get me. the hell out of this room. And mm. it's really uncomfortable because you hate the song, but like you've tried to voice that a couple times and the people in the other, in the room love it. That's really awkward. Interesting. I have an exchange. Have you had to like nix a song because you're like, no, and everyone else likes it? Well, after the fact, I mean, I'll like just end up going through with it. I was actually texting a friend of mine who's, has 
way more, way more famous and has done this a lot more. And I was Uh asking her like, what do I do? I'm in this terrible situation. These guys love this. I hate this. And she's like, start again. And I'm like, we already started again. She's like, start again. Start as many times as you need to, to get something that you love. It doesn't matter if it's 6 PM and you guys started at 12. If you leave that day without something that like is worthwhile for you, it was a waste of your time. I loved the stories that came out around when 25 came out, the Adele album, about how she was just like basically made him throw away a whole record because she didn't like it. I didn't know that. Yeah. She had all of these songs, I guess. She's on my label. I'm going to ask them about that. Oh, cool. Yeah. So she, I guess, I don't know, maybe you don't need to comment on this if it makes you uncomfortable and professionally, but apparently she and Ryan Tedder like wrote a whole album together that she then discarded basically. Wow. And I think he's like salty about it because he has fewer credits on 25 than he did on 21. And um, <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of his work. And um, <laughs> I did a song with him on this last record. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he seems like just like the goat to me. He's incredible. Yeah. I mean, I. He's I, hyper. Interesting. Oh my God. I, he has like so much energy. Yeah. I mean, I like, I happen to like One Republic. I mean, I, I like him in general, but anyway, yeah. they, she had this whole record and then she didn't like it. And so she basically discarded wow. it. It's one of the reasons it took a long time. And no, but good for her. Yeah. And also, Damn. but it's funny, she has a reputation of like being bossy. Mm. And, but I just feel like that's really gendered and sexist. Like That is so sexist. Yes. Yeah. Like I just A guy like, would, would be bossy and not yeah, ever, co- no one would ever say anything about it. He'd be like, oh, he's just knows his stuff. He knows what he likes. Yeah. And, yeah. and so then she ended up with Hello, which you're with, I believe, believe Greg with Kirsten. Greg Kirsten. Yeah. <gasps> so, and... And Tobias, and she also had um, when we were young with Tobias Jesso, who obviously is like really coming up. Jesus Christ, you know more about this than I do. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a nerd. I just love, okay. I love the singer songwriter world. I love I love a good vocalist. Adele is my my mm. number one. Damn, I would do anything for Adele. She'd be like, wow. just give me your next child. What if she was on this podcast? Would you want to talk TV with her? <sighs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what I she would. watches. I bet she watches a lot because she doesn't go out. I bet she watches Great British Bake Off. Definitely watches Great British Bake Off. And she probably watches, like, she's awesome. I'm also, like, really into carpool karaoke. I'm just, I like all the nerdy stuff. And so she, hers is, like, the best when she's doing the hers Nicki Minaj. Was, I, have just, I have a funny story about that. So I was, um, it was my first time doing Late Night, and mm. I was on Corden. Oh, cool. And I what was, year? uh, two years ago. Okay. Last I don't know. A year and a half ago. I think sorry. I watched that actually. Okay. So I was I watched almost all of his clips online. Okay. So um I did Corden and I was so excited. And Adele is on my label mm-hmm. and is and was like, it was a joke because clearly Adele and I are not in the same league to compare. Like yeah. that's like crazy. Well, but I just think you're really, really different artists. Also, she's massively famous. Yeah. And but I mean, it's just it's just different. And we're also, different. Yeah. But still. So Fight Song was out and it and Sandbody was out and it was two number ones in a row and it was a big thing for the label. And then and everyone and I was like, they're darling. And then Adele, and then Adele put out 25. Yeah. And it was just like a joke. Like it was like Rachel Who? And they were kidding because they all like <laughs> were really proud that I had sold sure. millions and millions of records for them. Yeah. But still, like it was this thing where we I was like, Adele, yeah. Adele. You know, and like and so anyway, on, on Corden that day, I was like, this is my moment. I'm shining. Like, this is incredible. And my label was there and everyone was there like afterwards to party with me because there's like a beautiful green room where you can go hang out after. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I came back after and I walked back in to the green room, like expecting just like <laughs> applause and like celebration. And everyone literally looked at me like, shh, Rachel, 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 stop, stop, stop. Adele's carpool karaoke is about to start. Oh my God. <laughs> That's brutal. It was so I'm brutal. so sorry. It was, it was really funny. My husband and I were like, "Oh my god, of course." That sucks, though. <laughs> I would have celebrated like, I can't you. Can't escape her. Oh no, my god. No, no. I'm sorry. I brought her up then. No, it was fine. No, 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 no. I love. I love her. I'm a massive fan. It was just a, kind of a joke. Massive, as they say in England. Massive. So back to the songwriting. Then. Okay. How long is a session? Like, how, after a how many s- hours do you want to kill yourself? You usually get there about like one, but let's say two because the one start time's one. Everyone's one, late. Um, a session's about anywhere from like six to 10 hours. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's weird if someone's like, oh, I have to go and it's 5 p.m. And you're like, what? Mm. You don't have to go. That's so rude. But um, I would say in the beginning of the day, you go through these phases, like which I'm sure you do with writing too and podcasts and any creative idea where you like, fall in love with the Mm. idea and you're like I am a genius (laughs) I figured it out I am incredible (laughs) this is the best thing that anyone's ever done and then 20 more minutes and you're like uh what's going on I can't quite figure this out and like an hour later you're like this is the worst song that anyone's ever written like why am I even allowed to do this right and you hate yourself so I would say about that point in the day yeah usually sometimes there are those rare days where you just like know that you have something incredibly special Mm -hmm. and the whole day is like hype 
and you're just psyched, but usually you have to struggle and it's like a little puzzle you're trying to figure out the whole day and, and people have different roles in the room. So I think maybe it's a little bit more rare when an artist is a top liner and um, which is melody and lyrics. Sure. Cause sometimes artists will um, be writers, but sure. they, you know, or like, supposed writers but they're they really credit, kind of they get a credit writing. yeah but they're in the room but yeah. they're not really contributing and that is true you don't need to say it I will of yeah. many people you hear on the radio where yeah. like it's like oh they got a credit but they, they are not actually yeah. a writer that's true but yeah. they are they're you know they're amazing vocalists and they're whatever they can pull it off um yeah I'm an actual writer like if I had to choose one or the other mm. I would choose writing really 100% over performing yeah Huh. I love performing, but I couldn't go without writing. Do you like to write for other people or only for yourself? I do like to write for other people, but I haven't done it as as much as I want to. Like, mm-hmm. I actually think I want to move into that. Cool. And um, see if I can do that this summer a little bit more. Will yeah. you have? Will you be done with whatever products you're on right now to do it this summer? Is that why you say that? Yeah, I think I might be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can't say too much, but yeah. I mean, I'm like, just going to guess you're working on a soundtrack. And you, when, when it's time, you can tell me if that's correct or not. <laughs> so um, we'll move on. Okay. No, I just, I just like, I think that it's an amazing thing to be able to write for other people. It also was really hard. I did an artist session the other day mm-hmm. and I hadn't really done one in a minute. And it was so funny to me because I forgot what it's like to watch the artist like debate if they like something and you on the other side of it, it's just like, come on, this is great. Yeah. What are you doing? Stop being, <laughs> you know, like you're like, well, stop like making me write 50 verses. Yeah, yeah. This is amazing. Who's like the one songwriter you've not worked with who you would like to work with? I mean, he's a producer, but I really want to work with Mark Ronson. Oh, yeah. So badly. Oh, my God. Mark Ronson. What he's a babe. Inc- incredible. Yeah, just incredible. I, I just mean, also like what he does for women. I feel like he helps them. I assume find- you're an Amy Winehouse fan. Huge. Did you watch the Lady Gaga doc on Netflix? Yeah. Great looks from uh, Mark Ronson in that one. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I was already a fan of his, and then just it got reconfirmed. And yeah. what he I did with Bruno. I just want to say Mark Ronson. English, grew up in New York, Jewish. Perfect trifecta. <sighs> You know? Tattoos, though. Just book it. It's okay. <laughs> Those can be removed. I'm also, yeah, I didn't really know he was that handsome. Yeah, so he's tall, yeah. too, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And he, he just seemed really sweet when he was holding her. Really? Yeah, he's he's really, really talented. Uptown yeah. Funk, when yeah. it comes on at a wedding, I just lose my mind. It's probably the best. <laughs> you and everyone else. Yeah, it's the best wedding song, I think. Preeminent Him. of the 21st century. <laughs> I also want to work with um, uh, Max Martin, mm, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. Um, I once watched like this tribute to Max Martin, like yeah. when he won this like really prestigious award in Stockholm, like two years ago, maybe three years ago. And I obviously watched it because the Backstreet Boys are part of it. And I, I keep up with all their YouTube output. And um, <laughs> everyone who works with him seems to love him. Mm. And I truly, I love when songwriters talk about Max Martin mm. because I love hearing how, because he doesn't do press, you know, like, but mm. he he can like pinpoint like what's wrong with the song. Like, did you ever read his feedback on Greenlight by Lord? I did. He said it's not a perfect song. Yeah, he's like, it's not sense. perfect. Yeah. The drums came in too yeah. soon. And like, that's yeah. amazing. He's like, a, he's like a music scientist, yeah. which is so well, they have amazing. A, they have a thing called their math that they use. Oh, do you know about this? No, I don't. So the Swedes have, um, the, they call it their math and uh-huh. they came from Max Martin's school. And like, it's basically a formula that they use to find out if the song is being written correctly. Oh, wow. It's going to be way too hard to try to explain on, cool. the, on no, this. But, yeah. And I, it's like, you, if you're in a session with one of them and you know someone who knows the math. Well, like, it was Shellback is the other guy. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's like his his latest disciple. Yes. Good for you. I, I told Damn, you, this girl, is like my favorite you're thing. You're blowing my mind. <laughs> it's, this is really like my favorite thing. I feel like I'm thing. talking to a publisher. Cool. Wow, Juliet, you have a future in music <laughs> if you want. Rich. <laughs> well, okay. Oh, how about this? So you know all these songwriters. Who do you think I should work with? Uh, I think you got to get an Ed Sheeran song. Sounds like you're friends with him. He's such a sweetheart. Sounds like you got. I don't know if I can pull that card though. Like my no. favorite, my favorite, and my top three favorite 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 Taylor Swift song is uh, "Everything Has Changed," and it's because of that Sheeran yeah. on it. I love it. Are you a Taylor uh, fan? Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, I just, I also, Reputation has really grown on me. I, I happen to love Gorgeous. I think that's a great, it's a great song. Great song. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, Shake It Off is just, is a forever song yeah. and all too well. I mean, I, I actually, I miss Country Taylor a lot. Our song, mm. I love. Should have said mean, no. I love. Love me. Uh, Should have said no. Our song. Yeah. Like, I, I just like great stuff. Yeah. But um, wouldn't yeah. it be great if she decided to like go back to country? Yeah. She, yeah, it would be awesome. But, you know, whatever. Do your thing, girl. Mm. So we got to get you in the studio with Ed Sheeran. Um, I actually got sent a bunch of Ed songs mm. a couple weeks ago because I um, am 
doing this strange, bizarre thing where I'm like listening to songs that I didn't write to see mm-hmm. if I should sing them. And for me, it's not strange for other artists or other people, but like for me, I was had such an ego about like, well, I'm, I wrote Fight Song all by myself. Yeah. And, you know, so it's like a little strange for me to be listening to songs I had nothing to do with and being like, could I actually sing this? Right. Like, could I? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. I'll let you know. I'll text you if I decide to. <laughs> Please do. Yeah. But I'm in the process of like, well, what what would I have to, how much would I have to love the song? Right. It would really have to feel like me. Right. I so, also think, yeah. what about Sia for you? I just feel like oh, her yeah. vocals are so interesting. I have a song that I wrote for my album for Waves and I couldn't figure out the chorus for it. And, um, the guy I was working with is a guy named Jesse Shatkin. Mm-hmm. Do you know Jesse? He produced a lot of Sia songs. Oh. A chandelier, I think. And yeah, um, yeah. he sent it to Sia. He was like, do you want to write this chorus? <laughs> Did she do it? She wrote the chorus. Oh, my God. But I didn't end up using the song because yes. well, I, I couldn't I couldn't figure out the lyrics. She just mumbled it. It was like, oh, my God. And it was amazing. But then I couldn't figure out how to put words to, like, these brilliant melodies. Um, I have another question that I wonder yeah. if you're not going to want to answer. What, what, is, <laughs> what is your—this is really TV, which is why yeah. I need to ask it— what is your feeling on David Foster? Who? It's okay. F- phenomenal. Sorry. <laughs> so he, you know, Yolanda from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? Oh, uh, yes. And you know Gigi? Yeah, oh. Gigi and Bella Hadid? Yeah, of He course. was like their stepfather. And okay. his daughters are Aaron and Sarah Foster, <gasps> oh. who are like models. And, but he's like a, he, okay. he really dimes out. I'm like this big songwriter. Oh. But I'm like, dude, I follow pop music. I know you're not writing for the important people anymore. Do you want to know a cool celebrity, by the way? Sure. Gigi, by far. Really? She is the She's, nicest. Really? Blake and Gigi are like, Blake Lively. Lively, yeah. Yeah, I like Blake Lively a lot. Nicest, sweetest. That's cool to hear. Yeah. Interesting. I'm like the least fun celebrity to have on here because I'm like talking nice about everyone. It's no, not I, what you want. No, it's good. <laughs> Actually, I'm I'm surprised that Gigi Hadid is nice just because really? she's never reason not to be. She's Bella real, is too. Really pretty, grew up really rich, really connected, very successful. She's one of the most down to earth people I've met in Hollywood. That's and awesome. Like, yeah. So what do you think? You've mentioned a lot of squad members. What do you think about the squ- Taylor Swift squad phenomenon? Um... The- I don't know. They're all just like, God, I wish I could be like more fun and like talk shit for you. But like, they're such nice people. Honestly, Taylor attracts really incredible, smart people around her. What do you think about all the criticism of her? Like, do you think it's fair, unfounded? I think it's unfounded. Um, I, I mean, it's your friends. I don't so. think it's fair. I think, I know. I just think like she is trying, she tried something with music and she was following her inspiration and mm-hmm. it was like truly what she was like channeling you know yeah. it was like she's an amazing songwriter and she I don't is, know I think she's like, a really good songwriter everyone just has such crazy expectations for people once they get famous like you would never treat a friend the way you talk about like I know that's ridiculous yeah. because she also gets all the benefits of being a worldwide superstar yeah yeah but anyway I just think like you know sure I, I think the album's great and like my album wasn't my album waves wasn't maybe what some fans like Fun some fans maybe would have wanted more fight songy kind of stuff and I, more like earnest hopeful. You you came you came against that. Like a lot of people like be like, where's like your message or whatever? But my favorite songs from the album are like kind of the fun workout songs. Like yeah. Here this at Soul Cycle and feeling good about myself. Will you let me sit in on a session one time? Wait a second. It could be really dope to have you come in and document it. I would love to do that. That would be amazing. Yeah, I would seriously love to do that. Because it, it's like it's yeah. a passion of mine. And I think people don't and one of the things I love about reality TV increasingly is there's more of a sense of how it gets made. They show the process. Yeah, and that's what I'm really yes. fascinated in. And one of the reasons, one of the things I like to do on this pod is like talk to showrunners and producers yeah. to like understand. Because similar to like how there's like so much, obviously, on a huge or more huge scale about like, you know, famous singers. There's so many rumors about like what happened in the studio or like who's yeah. working with whom and like yeah. who's Taylor Swift friends with. And I'm so curious about like what, where, what's the kernel of truth underneath that yeah. rumor this all grew from? And that's, and I, I think seeing behind, going behind the scenes, particularly with like pop culture products is one of the most fascinating things to me. I think that's a f- amazing idea, actually. And right. you're right. There's so many shows about the process of food being made and shows being made and yeah. houses being built. And there really aren't about songs being made. Yeah. And, and, written. It's, it's, and that's mm. one of the reasons why, like, um, The Defiant Ones on HBO was a great documentary. Oh, my God. That was incredible. Yeah. And, like, why the Lady yeah. Gaga documentary was yeah. great. Because you got to see, like, the process. Yeah. And you got to see, like, what what is Stephanie Germanata like when she doesn't have her makeup on and, yeah. like, when she's stressed out and, like, just at home or whatever. Yeah. And, like, that people don't get to see that enough. And yeah. I think that's actually 
actually one of the reasons Taylor Swift gets so much criticism is because I can't remember the last time I saw her without like her makeup on, which is wait, I totally disagree. Really? I'm not only here to stick up for Taylor, no, but I, I have to say that in her release for her album, she was doing all those videos of That's the true. raw stripped down like sessions. She That's actually true. was doing that on her laptop without think, makeup on. But I think because she's such a mega celebrity, yeah. she has the apparatus in place to make it feel more corporate, which yeah. she should because yeah. make, make that money, girl. Like, yeah. I loved when Ellen Pompeo, I've talked about it a million times, like wrote that thing for The Hollywood Reporter about getting $20 million a year. And it was like, just like a really kind of like warts and all, like this is why I want the money. And like, yeah, yeah. like, Women should get the Acknowledge money. Acknowledge it. Don't be, yeah. Also, yeah. Well, it's just ridiculous to me that women are the only ones in entertainment who talk about getting paid. Like, just, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm with you. I, and I, just, yeah. I really support it. And so, like, yeah. I, I think Taylor Swift should make as much money as possible. Yeah. Be a capitalist. Go for it. But, like, I just think but that, acknowledge that that's what But I doing. think that also people then, it, it undercuts, like, a level of authenticity because it, because it feels hyper-produced what she's entitled to, but it's just, she can't win. Yeah, that, it's kind of, that I mean, when you're in that, that level, famous, yeah, yeah, there's no winning. Like, you're, you could try to be as authentic as you want and people are going to still say that it's, you know, totally. for, but also she can't help, but like, she knows so much now. Yeah, of about, course. But I also, think she's, she is like one of a kind. She's, yeah. I don't know. You know who I love right now? Oh, yeah. you should work with her. Dua, Lip, Dua Lipa. I l- love yeah. her. Yeah, she's great. IDGF yeah. is just a great song. It is a great song. And the video that, that was pretty cool, that that thing that they did at the Yeah, it was um, awesome. Lounge, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. also it's just like a really fun Yeah. I don't know. I just I love a vocalist. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like No, she is cool. I like Tori Kelly too. I like all the YouTube women. Tori is the sweetest. I love I was made for loving you. It's just a great song. Is that a Tori song? Yeah, it's with Ed Sheeran, actually. I don't know that one. It's really good. Okay. Um and she I, I oh, what's the other song I love? I'm looking at it really quickly. I like really into her. I, I also like I'm obsessed with Scooter Braun because I'm like, do you, man? Um the other Did song. Did you listen to him on obviously uh, on Bills? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it was that amazing. Was fascinating. It was great. Nobody Love is the song that I love by Tori Kelly. Oh, I love that too. I like dance alone to it in my Nobody apartment all the time. Yeah. I just Nobody love that love shit. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, wow, I'm really impressed by your knowledge of music. Thank you. I, pop music is my one true love Dang. before reality TV. Wow. I was a straight up teeny bopper. I took the day off from school in seventh grade when Millennium came out so I could go by myself to Times Square <laughs> and stand outside of TRL. <laughs> Did you really? No friends, so no cute. parents, just a 13 year old alone in the streets. It was like a really muggy day. It was you amazing. Know, there are those little girls that show up for concerts like that who've been waiting for hours and I they I will never forget that day like, they always, will love it forever I always hope that I'm like serving them enough for what they I'm give sure you me are. you know like it's just incredible the love of music at, at that age is so pure because mm-hmm. like it's it, you aren't able to express your emotions and when you in the way that you can as you get older yeah because you've more experience but like you hear a song that you just connect with when yeah. you're like 13 14 15 and just like it just hits. Like, yeah. it, it's called a hit because it hits, you know? And, like, you just, <laughs> you feel it. <laughs> you should edit that out. <laughs> no, that's, I will, not, I will not edit that it's out. It's called a hits because it hits you. That's what, it's called pop music because it's popular. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And, like, it's true. and so the, the yeah. music that you hear at that age, like, is so important. Yeah. And, like, it, yeah. it just opens your, it, I think it also, like, you feel things that you wouldn't have felt otherwise, like, emotionally. Yes. You know? I don't know. I just, I love pop music. That's really, really cool. Going off on a tangent. That's no, why I was so happy you're coming in. It's so cool. I'm so happy to know how much you know about it. Kevin was right. Um, I honestly am wow. just a huge loser and I look up everything. <laughs> like I really, I like. No, you're also I, a sponge. Like thanks. if you could be looking it up, but forgetting. Sure. But I just like, I Google and Wikipedia, literally everything. And I've always just wanted, I'm always like, mm. I'm just really, uh, I'm a big conspiracy theorist as well. Mm. So I'm always like, what's the truth here? And so mm. with pop music, I'm like, wow, this sounds beautiful. But when I hear a song that I like, the first thing I do is I go to YouTube and I look so for a live. Writers? No, oh. I look for a live performance of it. To be like, can you do this live? Oh, good like for you. outside of studio. Who has disappointed you? <sighs> Most disappointing. Hmm. Katy Perry's rough and she's got some real hits. You don't need to comment on that. Teenage Dream is like a perfect pop song thanks to uh, the powers that be. And it doesn't live up to the same mm. thing live, but there's some great covers out there. <laughs> um, who else has let me down? I don't, I don't know. I don't think I, re- I think I just kind of like f- just sift them out yeah. when, when, when it's letting you down. Yeah. But, it, but who is really connected? Like whose live performance made Dua you Dua Lipa like, is amazing live. Yeah, like, she really is. Just incredible. Yeah. So she's really impressive. I also think uh, Danielle Heim is like one of the best live performers. Like uh, she blows me away. She's amazing. She also, if you go back and watch some of their early stuff, she has improved so much and she mm-hmm. was already, they were all very talented. I just think that her transformation is the most stark to me. It's pretty hard to grow up. Like my first TV ever Mm -hmm. was in front of millions of people. 
And like it was my first performance of Fight Song and it was on the Radio Disney Music Awards. And I sounded so bad singing that song. And it was so horrible that I had to like be judged on the first time I was ever on TV because you really do have to learn it. And then I just performed it at the Olympics a a couple weeks ago. And it was, I was so proud of how much I grew and how much I was able to sing it. Yeah. When the first time I was on TV, it, I'm so I was so embarrassed by it for so long that it was out there and it was like it's really hard to do. Yeah, and, it seems like it. And you do get to grow up and learn how to do it. And there are techniques that you don't know in the beginning. So a lot of these artists, when you're like first watching them, and like if they're new artists, go easy. Don't gotta be afraid of those ghosts, angels on my shoulder. Now I know, I stay in the moment. Thanks again for listening, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. I will be back in two weeks. We're going to be talking more MTV reality. We're going back, back to the hills, back to Laguna Beach. One of my favorite topics. Uh, I think it's going to be a good podcast. Thanks again for listening. I'm Juliette Littman. And don't forget to check out the Ringer merch, recapables, and Lindsay Zoll ads on Logic.